edited video of the of the chapter letter to god you may find it boring to read the chapter once again this is one way to revise you can watch the videos uh mam glimpses of india glimpses of india we will continue that is of the second term uh i just wanted to do a bit of revision okay letter to god a letter to god was written by or uh, is the screen visible to all of you hello and the audio audio yes ma'am okay so just for a change you may find it boring to read the chapter once again so, so you can listen to this video and all the events will be uh, recapitulated the mexican writer gregorio lopez e fuentes 1892 to 1966 he is now best remembered as the leading chronicler of the mexican revolution which broke out when he was 15 working in his father's general store he came in contact with the farmers and laborers and later described their lives with deep insight his fiction is distinguished by the anonymous nature of the characters archetypes overshadowing individuals this story is about one such archetype strong faith with far fetched consequences considering the author's timeline the story is probably set in the 1920s shortly after the end of the mexican revolution the most striking detail is the sparse population as lencho's house is the only one in the valley this makes the southern part of mexico a likely setting with its diverse landscape in such remote places agriculture is almost the only mode of survival for people the story has a third person omniscient narrator with more focus on lencho's conflicts and convictions it allows an equally deep understanding of the simple but illiterate lencho and the compassionate but complacent self congratulating postmaster thank you let me take up the explanation now the house the only one in the entire valley sat on the crest of a low hill from this height one could see the river and the field of ripe corn dotted with the flowers that always promised a good harvest the only thing the earth needed was a downpour or at least a shower from this height one could see the river and the field of ripe corn dotted with the flowers that always promised a good harvest the only thing the earth needed was a downpour or at least a shower the story begins by describing the place to us an isolated rural location the detailed description of the land also indicates that this is a central focus for the protagonist lencho soon the much awaited rain begins to fall as well the man went out for no other reason than to have the pleasure of feeling the rain on his body and when he returned he exclaimed these aren't rain drops falling from the sky they are new coins the big drops are 10 cent pieces and the little ones are fives the rain feeds the crop essential for the family's survival that is why for lencho rain means money But suddenly, a strong wind began to blow, and along with the rain, large hailstones began to fall. These truly did resemble new silver coins. The boys, exposing themselves to the rain, ran out to collect the frozen pearls. Despite looking like silver coins and pearls, hailstones mean the opposite of wealth for the family. After an hour's hailstorm. Not a leaf remained on the trees. The corn was totally destroyed. When 
the storm had passed, he stood in the middle of the field and said to his sons, A plague of locusts would have left more than this. The hail has left nothing. This year we will have no corn. How quickly fortunes can alter. Nature is a tricky beast. And being dependent on her means to live eternally trusting to chance. That night was the sorrowful one. All our work for nothing. There's no one who can help us. We'll all go hungry this year. Our hardworking farmers in India face a similar situation year after year. Being so dependent on the rain, they are ruined if the rain fails one year, or if there is too much rain, or there is a hailstorm. Lencho's situation is a familiar one for us, even if we have only read about it in the newspapers. Can you imagine how desperate the family must feel right now? But in the hearts of all those who live in that solitary house in the middle of the valley, there was a single hope held from God. The only refuge of those who have no help from any other quarter, no money saved up, no banks to borrow from, no government to bail them out. God. All through the night, Lencho thought only of his one hope, the help of God, whose eyes, as he had Mama, come mic me Hello, is there any problem? Hello, hello, Mama, what's the name? Yes, I'm upset. I'm upset. I'm upset. Oh, video ka awaaz nahi aa raha tha no ma'am no ma'am kitna der se back karke 
तो कोई बोला क्या पांच मिनट अच्छा थोड़ा सा बैक कर देते हैं थोड़ा सा पांच मिनट बैक कर देते हैं All through the night, Lencho thought only of his one hope. Ran out to collect, he exclaimed, exposing themselves to the rain. Ran out to collect the fruit self would carry to town. Had his deep the situation year after year. Being so dependent on the rain. Okay. Hello. Hello. Should I play it from yes, here? Yes, ma'am. Should I play it from here? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm playing it from here. They are ruined if the rain fails one year, or if there is too much rain, or there is a hailstorm. Lencho's situation is a familiar one for us, even if we have only read about it in the newspapers. Can you imagine? How desperate the family must feel right now! But in the hearts of all those who lived in that solitary house in the middle of the valley, there was a single hope: help from God. The only refuge of those who have no help from any other quarter, no money saved up, no banks to borrow from, no government to bail them out. God. All through the night, Lencho thought only of his one hope. the help of god whose eyes as he had been instructed see everything even what is deep in one's conscience god had surely seen the labor he and his family put into the corn crop and how they would be destitute without it could a merciful god turn a blind eye to his faithful followers who had done no wrong had worked sincerely and asked for nothing other than the results of their hard work lencho was an ox of a man working like an animal in the fields but still he knew how to write the following sunday at daybreak he began to write a letter which he himself would carry to town and place in the mail it was nothing less than a letter to god god he wrote if you don't help me my family and i will go hungry this year i need a 100 pesos in order to sow my field again and to live until the crop comes because the hailstorm he wrote to god on the envelope put the letter inside and still troubled went to town at the post office he placed a stamp on the letter and dropped it into the mailbox Money, what are your feelings about what lencho did it is funny yes but also deeply touching in a way god isn't some abstract entity to lencho he is very real and available to listen to his devotees woes lencho's god doesn't need to be invoked with ritual prayers and masses and offerings he is approachable through whatever means his devotees want to use and did you notice the simple farmer's honest pride and self respect he is writing to god after all he could have asked for a billion dollars gold diamonds a big house but all he asks for is a 100 pesos only the amount he needs to survive and nothing more one of the employees who was a postman and also helped at the post office went to his boss laughing heartily and showed him the letter to god Never in his career as a postman had he known that address. The postman reacts as most people might. Praying is all very well, but what foolishness to actually write a letter to God. Next, they'd expect God to write back, maybe using stamps of the angels holding harps. The postmaster, a fat, amiable fellow, also broke out laughing. but almost immediately he turned serious and tapping the letter on his desk commented what faith i wish i had the faith of the man who wrote this letter starting up a correspondence with god sophisticated educated people offer prayers but would never do something like write a letter or try to call god why is it because somewhere deep inside 
we know there is no one to respond and that our prayers are a one-sided communication, Lencho may be barely literate, but isn't his faith so much stronger as he never doubts for a moment that God is listening and will surely respond to his cry for help. These are the great devotees we read about in mythological stories. So, in order to not shake the writer's faith in God, the postmaster came up with an idea. Answer the letter. But why should he care whether Lencho's faith is shaken or not? The same reason one plays along with a child when she talks of Santa Claus. We may have become hardened and cynical as we have grown older, but we remember when we had similar faith and the world was a simpler, better place. It touches a chord somewhere deep within us and we don't want to destroy the child's worldview yet. The postmaster is similarly touched by Lencho's great simple faith and would like to see it preserved as long as possible. But when he opened it, it was evident that to answer it, he needed something more than goodwill, ink and paper. Lencho had asked for money and it is no small matter to gather together money enough to feed a large family for an entire year, as well as to buy seeds and other necessaries for the next harvest. Assuming the story is set in the 1920s, a hundred pesos is equivalent to approximately one lakh Indian rupees in today's times. The postmaster couldn't possibly afford to send him a hundred pesos at such short notice. And yet, what was a hundred pesos to God? If he did not send this to Lencho, his faith in an infallible and all-powerful God would be lost. But he stuck to his resolution. He asked for money from his employees. He himself gave part of his salary and several friends of his were obliged to give something for an act of charity. Despite all his efforts, it was impossible for him to gather together the hundred pesos so he was able to send the farmer only a little more than half. He put the money in an envelope addressed to Lencho and with it a letter containing only a single word as a signature, God. The following Sunday, Lencho came a bit earlier than usual to ask if there was a letter for him. It was the postman himself who handed the letter to him while the postmaster experiencing the contentment of a man um. who has performed a good deed, looked on from his office. The postmaster sent Lencho money as God, but he expects the gratification of seeing the poor farmer's delight. Hello? Anyone? Audio is... Ma'am, the audio is... Maybe there is a problem from your end. From my end, it is yes, not. तो वीडियो भेजेंगे ना जब क्लास में तो फिर देख लेना ऐसे अभी तो मेरे तरफ से तो जा रहा है अच्छी अच्छी आवाज आ रही है जा रही है मैं आ रहा हूँ at the miraculous gift but the postmaster is in for a shock. Lencho showed not the slightest surprise on seeing the money. Such was his confidence. But he became angry when he counted the money. Not grateful or delighted, but angry. God could not have made a mistake, nor could he have denied Lencho what he had requested. Ah, we had almost forgotten the money is a little short of what Lencho had asked for. But what conclusions has he jumped to based on this? Immediately, Lencho went up to the window to ask for paper. What happened? 
साउंड नहीं आ रहा मैम साउंड आ रही है किसी को आ रही है किसी को आ रहा है मत सन इफ यू हैव एनी प्रॉब्लम विथ योर कनेक्टिविटी एट योर एंड because a video is being played maybe you have some connection issues so if you have any problem uh, i will send the recording and in the recording you can watch it again is it clear yes recording mai bhejungi yes, class ka to fir se tum log jo part miss hua hai dekh lena yahan se theek hai wahan us end pe kuch problem ho sakta hai theek hai na Yes, okay. Okay. Per ending. On the public writing table, he started to write, with much wrinkling of his brow, caused by the effort he had to make to express his ideas. When he finished, he went to the window to buy a stamp, which he licked and then affixed to the envelope with a blow of his fist. He is in quite a rage. Is he going to take God to task for sending him less money? We'll know soon. The postmaster is just as curious as we are. The moment the letter fell into the mailbox, the postmaster went to open it. It said, "God, of the money that I asked for, only seventy pesos reached me. Send me the rest, since I need it very much. But don't send it to me through the mail." because the post office employees are a bunch of crooks lencho some reward for a good deed this after all his efforts the postmaster is called a crook by his beneficiary well if we are to derive a moral from this story it would be this never come between a faithful devotee and his god or perhaps one from the bhagavad gita do your duty and do not expect the fruits of your labor not even the pleasure of seeing their surprise delight and gratitude thank you let me take up the analysis now let us first discuss the character of the protagonist in the story lencho lencho the protagonist of the story is a simple barely literate farmer He knew his fields intimately, and his whole life is consumed by them. His only source of sustenance, Lencho's world, is very narrow. His life is limited to his farm, his family, and a weekly ritual of church on Sunday. He knows and cares for nothing beyond his little world. He is even a little distrustful of what lies beyond, as seen in his negative assessment. of the post office staff educated town people and not rural folk like himself he is an honest hard working and self respecting man he has no desire for what he has not earned he is not greedy for luxury all his energies are focused on providing for his needs he has a very rudimentary grasp of god and religion in common with the rest of his family His faith in the existence of God is solid but beyond that he seems to have almost no knowledge of any religion there is no mention of how he visualizes god to be or whether he is aware of scripture or religious rites and rituals for lencho god simply is god for him is an omniscient and all powerful being who never fails to respond when his devotees are in trouble it doesn't seem in the least bit foolish or unusual for him to ask god for help when he himself is in distress the means he adopts writing a letter to god also doesn't strike him as in any way odd simply because he has no real idea on how exactly this god is to be approached lencho's character is polarizing we may see his unquestioning blind faith as evidence of him being stupid naive and gullible or we may see his faith as deeply touching and a mirror which shows us how little faith 
we learned people who engage in the proper ways of worship actually have. Now let us talk about the language. The story begins with short, even abrupt sentences, free of ornamentation. This locates us in Lencho's world and mind space. His world is all primary colors and no shades. His is an existence based on the here and now, what he immediately sees, hears and senses. The language is thus sensual, despite its bare bones construction. When the story's setting shifts to the post office, populated by urban people, less in tune with the natural world, the sentences become longer and more complex. There are more qualifying and descriptive phrases, and the focus is on thought, memory and experience, rather than the raw centrity of the present and the physical world we saw with Lencho on his farm. The story employs the literary device, irony. Irony is when one expects one outcome, but the opposite happens, causing a strange and amusing situation. Here, Lencho is helped by other human beings, specifically the post office staff and not God. However, Lencho, who believes that it was really God who helped him, blames the post office staff for stealing part of his money and calls them crooks. Instead of receiving gratitude for his efforts, the postmaster is cursed. Next, let us discuss the major themes in the chapter. Faith versus Reason The story hinges on two characters who are polar opposites. Lencho, whose predominant quality is faith, and the postmaster, who represents the outside world, ruled by reason. Lencho's faith is so strong because of his limited reasoning. He does not think logically about what he has learned about God and whether he is really going to help him. He simply believes. However, we cannot say they are binary opposites either. In a way, the postmaster's initiative to preserve Lencho's faith is in itself an act of faith in humanity. Lencho's logic has narrow limits, defined by handed-down beliefs. His anger was out of his limited reasoning that God would never be short of money to give him. Pity and Charity versus Entitlement The postmaster is motivated to help Lencho out of a sense of pity and charity. However, he ends up the object of Lencho's ire in the end despite all his efforts. We have all been the postmaster at some point of time or the other. We attempt to help someone with the best intentions, only for the object of our charity to misuse the help given to them. This comes out of a sense of entitlement. The person being helped thinks that he is entitled to the help received, just like Lencho does, and does not see it as a favour. The question raised by this is, should our charity be motivated by the expectation of gratitude? It wouldn't be completely unselfish then, would it? Should help be extended to those who feel entitled to assistance and even misuse it as they think it is their due anyway? These are difficult questions to answer and we will each have different perspectives based on our individual life experiences. Thank you everyone for a great session. Hello, am I audible? Yes, Hello. Yes, so, 
uh, was there any problem with the audio? No, no ma'am. No, you could hear it. Okay, in chat I'm getting some. What is there? Kaushal Kishore. Video's voice is not coming. Pragya. Ma'am, group me bhej dijiyega. Haan, group me to bhejenge hi. Group me bhejenge. Recording me to wo rahega hi. Video wo rahega. You know, sometimes reading chapters becomes very boring. So you can watch these animated videos. Uh, few words uh, are difficult. Maybe you don't understand the meaning of the few words, but still uh, you can understand the gist and everything. Okay. So, uh, can okay. I've sent the uh, PDF uh, with MCQ for revision. Have all of you seen that yes, class ten PDF? Yes, See, question patterns have changed. Question has become more uh, complicated, analytical. Some questions are not very, some questions are very straightforward. Some you have to analyze and think. So you uh, practice it. It's, we'll do practice in the class also. Okay. So um, three minutes is left. We can do this exercise. This is a, a error exercise. Automatic tele, Teller machines, ATM. So you know the full form of ATM? Has revolutionized banking and made life easiest. So what is the uh, mistake over here? Sugandh is present? Hello? 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 Okay, Aditya Raj. Aditya, you want to answer this? Am I audible? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma ma so who will answer this? What is the mistake in this line? Easier. Yes, yes. yes. made yes. life easier. easier. Bank customers could not withdraw money of their own account anytime. So as I told you earlier also, you have to read it as a whole. The sentences are interrelated. So, okay. So bank customers could now withdraw money of their own account anytime. So what is the mistake in this line? Hello? Hello? Ayush Mehra? Huh? Ayush yeah, Mehra? Can. So this is the mistake. Uh, made life easier. Bank customers can now withdraw money of their own account. Uh, Ayush there. from their own account. Ma'am, from, from there. there. Yes, from their own account. Somewhere in the in their own country. Somewhere, anywhere. Yes, anywhere. Anywhere. Or even from the world. Somewhere in their own country or even from the world. Huh? Kaushal? Which even from the world? Also, also even from the world. world. Also even from the 